Good morning and welcome to worship on this second Sunday in the season of Advent. We are glad that you are all here gathered in this building and online that we might be a community preparing together for the coming of the Christ child. So just a few announcements um, for us today. Uh, those of you who are Facebook users likely got this message. If you are not, um, unfortunately, due to the impending deluge of rain that it is supposed to be today, uh, the Christmas tree lighting at the tavern has been canceled. And unfortunately, the month is just getting away from us um, too, too far in that another date to reschedule is just not possible. So um, the tree will be lighted um, on its own, and um, we will pray that we get to go and have some fun together as a community next year. Um, our own Sue Landis, who is here in the pews with us, was the um, primary coordinator for that event, and so uh, she is going to hold off all that work for, you know, one more year. I'm going to tell you, we did get it decorated yesterday, and the lights are on. Okay. Uh, so. Right. Don't see it, because all they wanted us to make were painted by the kids down in Pasadena. Uh, so. Awesome. Very, very much. So we, the, the town is ready, um, even if it still sort of feels like it's spring outside, uh, rather than winter. Um... This coming week is a busy week um, just for meetings um, for the month. Finance Committee will meet tomorrow evening in preparation for the council meeting that will take place on Sunday, or Sunday, Thursday. Um, it's normal, regularly scheduled time, Thursday at 6.30. Um, so please mark your calendars for those items as well. Um, I will let you know, our, we had, we've had feedback the last few weeks um, from our online folks that they have not been able to hear when the congregational announcements are being made. So Ernie has the microphone um, for us kind of to go back to old school to make sure that our online folks can hear. So is anyone um, in the community having an announcement for us this morning, Sue? <clears throat> Just to reiterate, for the council meeting Thursday, new council members are to attend. So uh, all new council members, you know, be there. Um, and again, uh, we have some hams for Christmas. If anybody is also willing to donate a ham, we don't need a big one. We have a lot of families this year that are just two and three people. So just a small ham uh, will be fine. So thank you. Wonderful. Yes, Joe. Thank you. Uh, for the choir, I gave some people music, and we need copies, so the rest of you will get music. And next week we have festivities after church again, but we're going to still practice after church. So, because um, it usually takes a while for things to get started anyway. So we have two pieces, and you know I always have this stuff nailed down way ahead of time. So what we're thinking is, it's. With two services on Christmas Eve, some people come to the early service, some people come to the late service, and we don't, so it's, it's not easy to get a choir together for Christmas Eve. But since Christmas Eve is Sunday, we will sing that Sunday morning. Um, so I have two pieces, they're both, they're both very pretty, but relatively not hard. So plan on staying next Sunday, well plan on staying anyway, but we'll practice uh, before we go downstairs. And then we'll see how we do, um, if we need a whole lot more practice or not. So uh, just plan on doing that. Oh, and then there's a Christmas concert, Dunn Cannon Council of Churches. Is that who sponsors it? Mm -hmm. Festival of Music. Seventh. January 7th. So I'm thinking we can use these same two pieces for that community concert. That's a Sunday afternoon, right? Three. So um, we, we haven't had that for the past few years, but um, we will this year. So. If you can kind of pencil that in and anybody else that wants to join us, feel free. Just let me know so I make sure we have enough music. Okay, wonderful. Let the, the music of the season resound, right? Uh, 
Also, just a reminder, this coming Tuesday is our movie night at Regal Cinemas. Uh, as far as I can tell, there are still plenty of seats available. We have pre-ordered um, tickets for the folks who have told me already, but if you still are thinking of going, um, there is more than enough room for you. I know that there are some folks who would like to be able to um, carpool, so um, those of us who are going, if we can just kind of chat to see who is, who is driving and how, um, how we might ensure that everybody gets there as, as they need to. So please come if you are able. And then um, I think my final announcement is just to point out, um, and this is perhaps most especially for some of our folks online to take note of, um, along with uh, folks that are here and are not yet members of Christ Lutheran Church in kind of the official definition of membership. Um, and if you are interested in uh, membership, please see me, and we will plan to have a um, kind of discussion group um, in the month of January for those who are interested. Um, if we need to have part of that session be online, that is definitely possible. So please just get in touch with me through all the means that are um, necessary or available to you, and uh, we will... Uh, proceed with uh, getting that scheduled in January. No other announcements. I do not see. Very good. So that then just leads us to all of the birthdays and celebrations um, for this coming week. As you would see in your bulletin, we will lift up prayers for Sally Stoops, Ellen Oster, Hunter Hazard, and Tom Dobb, all who are um, members of this community celebrating birthdays this week. And then Chuck and Laureen Anderson also are celebrating their anniversary tomorrow. And so we as a community lift up prayers of blessing and hopes for a happy and joyous year ahead for them. With that, we will prepare our for our worship time. We will begin with the blessing of the Advent tree. You may remain seated for that blessing and then we will call to worship. Holy God, in this season of preparation, we fill our dwellings with signs and symbols that point to us to you. We give thanks for all the ways in which you make your presence known to us. We hear your voice in song. We feel your presence in the creation. We see your revelation in light and in the dark and quiet spaces. God, our creator, we give you thanks for this evergreen tree, a sign of your everlasting presence. Let its glowing lights be a sign to us, reminding us of the eternal presence of Christ among us. May all who reflect upon these lights eagerly seek the true light which never fades. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Gracious God, shower your blessings upon us as we illumine these greens. Send us your son, the tender shoot of Jesse, who brings us light and life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite the congregation to stand as you are able. A voice cries in the wilderness. Lift up every valley, lower every mountain. But the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who opens the heavens and draws near to us with salvation. Amen. God is patient and merciful, desiring all to come to repentance. Trusting this promise of grace, let us confess our sin.
Everlasting God, you love justice and you hate wrongdoing. We confess the fear, greed, and self-centeredness that make us reluctant to work against oppression. We are complicit in systems of exploitation. We choose comfort over courage. We are careless with creation's bounty. Look upon us with mercy. Turn our hearts again to you. Make us glad to do your will and to walk in your ways. For the sake of our waiting world, amen. Hear these words of assurance. God clothes you with garments of salvation and covers you with robes of righteousness. In the tender compassion of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. God's covenant is eternal, and God's blessing rests upon us all. Amen. We sing our gathering hymn number 264. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. Loving God, you sent your prophet John to prepare your way among us, to call us to repentance and make our pathway straight. Strengthen us to live lives of steadfast love and faithfulness as we await the Messiah's return, that all may see your reign of peace through your just and gracious rule. Amen. The congregation may be seated. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, ruler of the universe. John the Baptist calls all people to prepare the Lord's way, for the kingdom of heaven is near. Bless us as we light the candles on this wreath. Baptize us with the fire of your spirit, that we may be a light shining in the darkness, welcoming others as Christ has welcomed us, for he is our light and our salvation. Blessed be God forever. Amen. First reading is taken from the 40th chapter of Isaiah. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice cries out, and I said, What shall I cry? And all people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here's your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms, and carry them in his bosom, and gently lead the mother's sheep. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have restored the good fortune of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people and blotted out all their sins. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for you speak peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. 
Truly your salvation is very near to those who fear you, that your glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness have met together, righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Faithfulness shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before the Lord, and shall prepare for God a pathway. Second reading is taken from third chapter of Second Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for the hastening, the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire? But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth, where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the gospel of our Lord. You, the congregation may be seated. Grace to you and peace 
from God the Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When I was little, maybe about four or five years old, my family went to the Toledo Zoo for the day. Although we lived in Michigan, we were very close to the Ohio border, so it was only about a half hour's drive to the zoo. We actually went to the Toledo area all the time, but the zoo itself is in the downtown area where we really didn't go very often. So on this trip, it was my mom and dad and me, because it was long before either of my sisters were born. We were going with my grandma and grandpa. My grandpa was driving, and we were in their great big yellow Oldsmobile. I don't actually remember much about our day at the zoo, but what I do remember is that as I sat in the back seat with my mom and grandma, as we were supposed to be heading home, it became apparent to me that we were lost. My dad and my grandpa, who were masters of getting us anywhere with just their instinctual directional prowess, I could never understand how they did it, but that day, they had managed to get us lost in Toledo. And all of a sudden, Toledo seemed like it was a million miles away from home. I remember standing up in the back seat, peering over to the front, because of course this was the 70s and nobody was buckled in at all. And it was starting to get dark. And I remember looking out the side window and just seeing these desolate looking railroad tracks running next to us. It seemed to me we just could not have been further from our little town of Dundee than we were at that moment. I remember feeling the panic starting to build, wondering if we were ever going to get home, wondering just how this had happened. And I'm guessing that I must have started to voice my own four-year-old concerns about the situation in a way that just wasn't helpful to the men in the front seat because the last thing that I remember of that day was my grandma telling me, just lay down on the floor, don't look. The Oldsmobile was plenty big, so I had all the room. And I remember taking a deep breath and laying down at my mom and my grandma's feet. And I assume that we eventually made it home since I'm here today. We came out of the wilderness of Toledo and the terrors that my mind told me that had surrounded us. At four years old, I had experienced that the wilderness of life can take many shapes. Sometimes it looks like being lost in the big city of Toledo, but sometimes it might also look like the inside of a doctor's office I came to know. When people get a diagnosis that they were not expecting, the wilderness can be a trip to the hospital for chest pains or surgery. And sometimes it looks like sitting alone in the dining room at the table where a loved one used to sit across from us. Sometimes the wilderness is actually not even really a place, but rather inside us. A wilderness where fear and anxiety and sadness live, caused by a world we just don't understand. Sometimes the wilderness looks like difficult choices to make. And sometimes it looks like events happening in our lives over which we have no control. Sometimes the wilderness looks like betrayal by a friend or the infidelity of a loved one. 
Sometimes the wilderness looks like going into assisted living when you weren't ready or a memory that has become fuzzy and is no longer reliable as it once was. The wilderness indeed is varied and different in each of our lives, but most of us have been there at one time or another. And indeed, some of us are there now, wondering whether we will find our way out, hoping perhaps that no one else will realize just how deeply lost in the wilderness we are. And so that is why Every Advent, when we hear God's proclamation coming from the great prophet Isaiah, comfort, oh, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem. We cling to those words like a balm for our soul. We hear words that we can cling to when we aren't sure how to make it from one day to the next, from one moment to the next. The prophet who has declared words of judgment that can sometimes strike fear in our hearts also speaks words of profound comfort from our God. The words of Isaiah today comfort and quiet our hearts. Reassure us that we remain in God's sure and steady care. For those of us wandering in that wilderness of chaos and darkness of the soul, these words might offer a hope. When we had begun to fear that hope had actually left us behind. These words of Isaiah prepare us to hear God's word of promise and preparation, letting us know that the wilderness is not desolate and filled with despair, despite our own fears and doubts. In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Hear that in the wilderness, even as we are still wandering, even when we feel lost and confused and fearful and sorrowing, even there, maybe because we are there, God calls us to prepare. Prepare yourselves for the way of the Lord, for the one who will lead us out of that wilderness is coming. The prophet proclaims the coming of the one who will rule God's people with the might of a gentle shepherd. The one who will bear good news into the world will carry us, the flock of God's pastures, gently. God bids us to come out, to dare to leave the wilderness, to dare to trust the good news that our penalty has been paid, our sins are forgiven, whatever they might be. Get you up to a high mountain, people of God. See the Lord is coming. The great power and beauty of the prophets from ancient times to current time is that they speak words we need to hear when we need to hear them. Wherever we are, both judgment, and joy. Both true, both needed, both righteous, both judgment and joy for us. It does not matter where we are, for even in the wilderness of this complex and difficult life's journey, the power of God's word can find us and will meet us where we are, even in the wilderness. There is good news. Even in the wilderness when the world's fears and doubts and sorrows have crushed us beneath these heavy loads, we are reassured there is good news. We are not alone. A voice cries out to us. In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. What a revelation 
that is. Even in the wilderness, we can hear this good news. God knows the wilderness wanderings of God's people and calls to us there, for the Lord is coming, even as we wander. Today in your hearing, you have heard the prophecy and the fulfillment of that prophecy. Mark tells us that the words of Isaiah are fulfilled through John the Baptist, the one who is crying out from the wilderness to the people of Judea, to us today, to prepare the way of the Lord. John proclaims for us that the promised one is coming John fulfills Isaiah's prophecy and stands fully in the line of prophetic witness. For John has been sent to point us to Jesus, the one who is coming. John proclaims this good news that the Son of God is coming. Mark proclaims the good news too. Jesus Christ, Son of God, has come into the world, and John stands at the beginning of this good news. Good news that we have needed to hear, longed to hear. John stands in the wilderness, calling God's people to repentance in order to be ready for the one who is coming to bring salvation and peace among us to this world. A word that the world is dying to hear. The word who brings light and salvation, peace and justice, mercy and love for all God's people. All you who dwell in the wilderness still, hear this word of comfort. God sees you. God knows you. God knows where to find you. The shepherd calls you to come find rest for your souls. The good news is proclaimed. The Lord comes with a powerful, gentle might and stands before us, guiding us toward safety beyond the wilderness. A place where there is life everlasting. A place where we see the coming of the kingdom. Comfort, oh comfort my people. The star is rising. The prophets point the way. Guide our hearts to Bethlehem, where the baby comes to save his people. Amen. I invite the congregation to stand as you are able. We sing our hymn of the day, number 256. Thank you.
I invite the congregation to be seated for this time. So you may have noticed as you were gathering, perhaps chatted amongst yourselves, we have a whole variety of created gifts here among us today. Blankets and scarves and maybe a hat somewhere, but um, all of these things have been created by uh, members in this community that are going to be given out to others and we offer a blessing for them. Blessed be your name, O God, you are the source of every blessing. From your hand we receive the good gifts of life, health, and salvation. Let us pray. Most gracious God, as the winter months come upon us and temperatures grow cold, we remember that some of our neighbors do not have a home where they can find shelter and warmth. This day we rem remember before you those who live outside and in their cars. We pray for those whose housing is temporary and undependable, for those who must rely upon the generosity of strangers to keep them safe and warm. You bid us to clothe the hungry and care for the poor. We grieve that poverty exists. We lament the suffering of those who lack basic needs of housing, food, and safety. We give thanks for churches, nonprofits, government agencies, helping ministries, and individuals who offer their time and talents to provide for those at this time of the year. May your blessings surround them. This day, we especially give thanks for the continued work of the Memorial Blanket Project as they seek to raise awareness of homelessness and housing insecurity. We lift up to you all who have worked to make blankets that will be displayed at the Pennsylvania Capitol. We ask for your blessing upon these blankets and scarves and pray that they will be a blessing upon those who receive them. As they wrap themselves in these blankets, let them know the warmth of your presence and loving care for them. Let them know that they are not alone. Guide them to any and all the help that they need. May the heart of our Lord and Savior guide us to always care for each other, especially for the lost and least among us. The Christ has come upon this earth to bring salvation, that we might have abundant life. May that salvation extend over all those who are in need of protection from the cold and bitterness of winter. Let your eternal promise guide us ever and always to be a community of faith who loves as you do. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. I invite the congregation to stand. We will offer our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share a sign of peace with one another.
With hope and expectation, we offer, offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all who await God's day of restoration. Send forth your faithful people with words of promise and forgiveness. Teach your church to be bold in revealing your good news in word and in deed. Merciful God, our reveal your majesty in mountain peaks, flowing rivers, and blossoming wilderness roads. Heal the earth where it longs for renewal. Bring wholeness to the earth and all its creatures. Merciful God, Turn the hearts of the nations toward righteousness and peace. Increase cooperation for justice between countries, commonwealths, political parties, and diplomatic leaders. In times of prosperity, direct leaders to be generous for the sake of all. Merciful God. Comfort your people with tender words of love and healing. You have made us for a holy purpose, to comfort and care for each other. Surround all who are grieving, all who know de depression or anxiety, or all who feel lonely or forgotten. Be a steadfast presence when all else feels uncertain. We remember before you Shirley, Alan, Pat, Audrey, Sarah Jane, Roger, Charlotte, Joanne, Jack, Kathy, Millie, Jerry, Roxy, Karen, Joe, Ardenna, Darlene, Nancy, Lillian, Ron, Bonnie, and Judy. Merciful God, grant holy patience to all who are awaiting the season. Give hope to those seeking employment. Bring reassurance to people awaiting new diagnoses for treatments. Watch with these who keep bedside vigil. Merciful God. With you, a thousand years is like a day. Bless the memory of the saints from ages past and the anticipation of saints yet to be born, inspiring us to live with faith as we await your new heaven and new earth. Merciful God. Listen to these and all our prayers, O God of hosts, and restore us with your great and everlasting mercy. Amen. Amen. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people to his faithful, to those who turn to him in their hearts. Are you listening for what God is saying to you, to your congregation, all of God's people? It's hard to hear anything with the anxious noise of the world. Living right, we turn away from the noise and listen for God's word of peace, and we live it. We will now worship God with our offering. Congregation may be seated. <laughs>
us pray. God, our provider, by your merciful hand, abundant springs up from the earth. Receive and bless these gifts of our own bounty. Let them be a sign of your steadfast love and faithfulness for all people. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son, Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Holy Spirit. Spirit. All praise and glory are yours. Holy One of Israel, word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So come to this table. You who have much faith, and you who would like to have more. 
you who have been here often and you who have not been for a while, you who have tried to follow Jesus and you who are wandering still. Come, it is Christ who invites us to meet him here. Amen. The congregation may be seated. For those who will commune in your pews or at home, this is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you.
I invite the congregation to stand as you are able. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Generous God, in bread and cup, you have revealed your glory for all people to see together. Nourished by this meal, send us out to proclaim your good news of liberation and release. Brought to birth in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. People of God, the day of the Lord is coming Therefore, strive to live in peace, for God's salvation is near. And may faithfulness spring from the ground and righteousness look down from heaven as you walk in the way of peace. And may the blessing of God, eternal majesty, living word, and holy comforter be with you always. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is near. We sing our sending hymn number 249.
Before we leave this place, just a reminder that we will be having lunch downstairs, so please don't leave unless you must. Uh, we will be putting together gifts for our homebound and visitation folks. And so we would love to have your hands help us in the creation of those gifts to send our love along to them. Because we at Christ Lutheran Church are... Go in peace, the living word dwells in you.